a lot of people still uh yep still dropping in so while uh while we've got everybody dropping in we will uh launch a few polls uh on our webinar on the iq hardwire power g uh, with dan and myself i'm getting to do double double duty today host and presenter so here we go first poll see if it launches there we go All right, so what percentage of installs are you using some form of a wired to wireless module? All right, about less than 10%, about half of you are less than 10%, but there's a lot in the 10 to 25 and 50 to 75% range. That's, uh, that's great, we'll leave this open for just a few more seconds. All right, we'll close that poll. So yeah, just uh yeah, 14% uh, 10 to 25, 14% 50 to 75 and the less less the ref the, the rest less than 10%. All right. There we go. Have you used the IQ hardwire power G yet? Hey Neil, uh just a quick yep. reminder to everyone uh who's on the webinar, there's there's four handouts for download um for different things for this uh, PowerG module that they can get some information on. And uh, also, if everyone could locate your uh, your questions and, and type in, tell us where you're joining us from today. So that way, if you have any questions throughout the webinar, we can answer them. Thanks, Joel. Yeah, so just over uh, one third of the folks online have used the IQ Hardwire PowerG so far. That's great. Okay. So this is for those one third who have used the IQ Hardwire PowerG. Have you used the keypad function, the keypad functions yet? So of those who have used it, it's about even 50-50, yes and no, that's great. Well, you're gonna be excited by the end of this, some of the new features that are gonna be gonna be coming to this module in the near future. Okay, we'll just give that three or four more seconds. All right, so same kind of thing. If you have used the IQ Hardwire PowerG before, uh, have you been using the PGM function? So a lot of uh, you know, people haven't used it yet, right? But there is, yeah, about, it's about the same, using the, the number of people using the, the, the keypad functionality are also using the PGM functionality. Leave that open. We keep trying to keep these things open for about 30 seconds. So we'll leave it open for just about six or seven seconds more. All right. One last poll. What features would you like to see added to the IQ Hardwire Power G module? Bigger housing, some zone expander support, uh, you know, the correct voltage output to be able to power the IQ panels. Or if you have any other, please comment in the question box if there are other things you would like to see on this module, because obviously, you know, we have a, you know, we have a defined roadmap, but we can always add more things to the roadmap as we go. So a lot of, uh, well, bigger housing for sure. Strong, strong for bigger housing, stronger for zone expander. Yeah, correct voltage to be able to power the IQ panel off the module. That's a little, yeah, that's great. All right, we'll close that poll off. All right, Dan, you are able to see my screen, I hope. Yes, we can. Yep. All right, perfect. So for those, uh, you know, this is uh, this is the workshop, obviously, that Dan and I are going to present on the IQ Hardwire Power G module. Um, PGX, but it's the PG9 in North America, PG9 WLS HW8. I know we could come up with an easier part number, but you know, we didn't. Uh, so let's see what's going on here. All right. So very similar. You'll see this is actually the IQ4 on the screen. You know, you know what's great about um, you know the IQ2, IQ4 is you know you walk it into any house and being able to take over any hardwired or wireless device you know, even smoke detectors you know keeping your installation easy and keeping your costs low you know so very similar to you know what we saw in iq2 you can on uh, our gold box 319 
you know, the, the wired to wireless or the IQ hardwire power G is compatible along with the red box, along with the silver box. And then the big, you know, one big change here is on the yellow box or our 319 line, you can mix and match the IQ hardwire power G along with the IQ 16F, right? So you kind of get the best of both worlds on uh, any of our 319 uh, boxes. You know, so the IQ hardwire power G uh, specs, pretty simple. You, first off, you need 253 or higher to be able to utilize the module. I mean, so if you want to use just, you know, use this as a wire to wireless takeover module, as long as you're on 253 or higher, you are good to go. Uh, built into the board, eight zone inputs. Uh, you can have normally open, normally closed, single end of line, double end of line, uh, you know, uh, supervision of those, of those loops. You got your four PGM outputs, uh, the two wire smoke detector loop built in. Uh, now, you know, we've talked previously that, you know, you can use hardwired keypads. So that was introduced in 2.6.0. Uh, so you would have to have, uh, you know, that firmware on the panel and version 1.1 1 .1 of, uh, of the module. And then you can support up to two of the Neo HS2 uh, LCD or Icon keypads. Then we obviously, we have a, a, an individual bell loop, uh, which is supervised, you know, at 700 milliamps. You know, two separate auxiliary power loops. So there's an aux one and an aux two. Uh, we are using an AC to DC uh, 18 volt transformer. Uh, we got some feedback from you, uh, from you uh, dealers, and from our, from our, you know, our partners out there. They didn't like the current design of the tra of the transformer. So, you know, on the pretty well the last slide, Dan will be talking about some of the roadmap things. One of the things that is coming is a new design transformer for it. Uh, very similar in, in size and shape to, you know, what you would have from a, uh, an IQ panel. Um, so kind of the same kind of wall plug-in. It does require, uh, you know, a 12 volt, seven amp backup battery. Uh, we do have dual tampers. So we have one on the front and one on the back. Uh, and we have heard the feedback online that folks would like to see the ability to disable, um, you know, disable the tampers if they wanted to put it into their own housing. Uh, it is something we're looking at. I, we do not recommend or endorse people soldering uh, those tamper those tamper pads, which we've seen online. Uh, there is some other options we're looking at. Uh, you maybe being able to disable through programming, but uh, you know one thing that we have to be cognizant of is the PowerG transmitter is built into the module. So if you're going to take it out of its plastic can and and do whatever you want to do to the tampers, please do not put it in a metal can. And then expect you know similar range because you're not you're just not going to get that range. Uh, and then obviously it's two units uh, per IQ panel. So this this is compatible across IQ2, the soon to be released IQ Hub, and IQ4. So it'll be across all of the IQ panels, uh, and all future IQ panels will be able to support this module. So I think I'm going to pass this off to you now, Dan. Good deal. Good information. Here is the typical install of this module. Uh, as Neil mentioned, it comes in the plastic enclosure, self-contained and already built when it comes out to you. You'll notice that there's mounting holes for mounting holes, traditional control enclosure that you can screw to the wall, seven amp hour battery that Neil mentioned, and the wall tamper. If you are going to use the wall tamper, there is a screw slot that you secure that down to the wall. So as that box is pulled off, the tamper gets broken and exposed. There's the new transformer that Neil mentioned. Uh, no, that's not the new one. It looks like the new one, but uh, it has been updated to a plug-in feature rather than a corded feature. It is a 12 volt, excuse me, an 18 volt DC transformer into this. Next slide, Neil. All right, here is the connection for that transformer where we come into the first two terminals for 18 volts DC. It is polarity conscious, so make sure you're using the correct transformer and wiring red to red, black to black, positive and negative appropriately. Next. Second set of terminals is your bell circuit. This is for a siren output. It's a voltage output. It will provide 12 volt DC up to 700 milliamps of continuous power. For a siren, if you're using speakers or taking over speakers, you do need to have a siren driver. If you choose not to use a bell output, strap it off with a 1K resistor. Next. 
In the middle of the board, we have our PGM outputs that Neil mentioned. There's four built into this panel. Each one will be programmable to follow many different options. Each PGM will have its own current draw capability. PGM one, three, and four are limited to 50 milliamps. PGM number two has up to 300 milliamps for two wire and four wire smoke detector power support. On the next slide, we'll have an example of a PGM being wired into a RM2 relay that you could supplement uh, additional power or have a Form C relay to trigger other activity in the system. So this is wired AUGS positive to red uh, coil power and AUGS negative to black negative coil power of the relay. Then we move into our zone configuration. As Neil mentioned, this panel will support normally open, normally closed, single end or double end line configuration. And that's programmable by zone in the setup of the module. Here's an example of zone one being wired out to a standard door contact from the zone out to the contact with single end aligned back to common. If we wanna wire a motion detector or a powered security device, that will look like this. Oh, there's two AUGS outputs, as we mentioned earlier. AUGS one is dedicated for security. AUGS two is dedicated for life safety. So here's where we would wire our motion power from AUGS positive one and AUGS negative to the motion. And zone five in common pick up the normally closed circuit with single end of line being represented. In the newer version panels, 2.60 and now 2.61, and a uh, version 1.10 translator, we can now add up to two hardwired keypads per convert translator. This is gonna wire off our traditional core bus connections. So on the translator, we have the red, black, yellow, green that will wire down into the keypads, red, black, yellow, green. You will notice on the Neo keypad that there is a fifth terminal, and that is for a zone PGM output for the Neo platform. It is not utilized in this translation application. Moving into two-wire smokes, it's a little bit more complicated, but we mentioned that this will support two-wire smokes. Uh, up to 18 smoke detectors could be looped into this. You do have to be conscious of the power draw uh, and the circuit power needs, but this is where we go from AUGS positive, AUGS2 positive in this case, and loop power through the two-wire smokes, and then return through the resistor. End of line will be a 2.2K resistor, and we return back to the PGM as a negative. Very easy circuit to set up. Uh, in programming and as in wiring. The chart here is going to uh, go through the compatible smoke detectors for two-wire smokes that are listed with this product. So take a look at that, and it's also in the installation manual for further review. When it comes to four-wire smoke detectors, we can support those. A little bit more complicated in its wiring, but if you follow the path here, uh, we take the red AUGS through the smoke detector loop to the end of line powered relay, which in this example is a DSC's RM2 end of line powered supervision relay. Negative then travels back to the board through the smoke detectors to PGM number two. That's your power side of the circuit. The four wire smoke detectors require a zone connection now and from zone and common we funnel through that loop and end up at the end of line with a 5.6k resistor in line with that circuit. This will now supervise that power to that smoke loop for alarm, trouble, um, and normal conditions. The translator will support two wire smokes or four wire smokes. They cannot be intermixed on uh, an individual translator. Next slide. Yep. All right, so we get a lot of questions online of uh, and, and through our tech support group of how to enroll 
um, the IQ Hardwire Power G. So we captured the screen here. Uh, it may go a little fast, so I'm going to try and walk through it um, at the correct speed. But if not, you know, you can ask the questions in chat, and Joel and Mark uh, are, are there to answer those questions. All right, so it's super easy. You know, installer or dealer code, you're going to enter 11111. You know, so and then you will get into, you know, settings, advanced settings. There we go. So settings, advanced settings. Installation devices, very similar to learning a Power D device, security sensors, auto learn the sensor. All right, so I'm gonna, you know, in this case, I hit the, the enroll button on the wired to wireless module. It's requesting to be added to the system. Simple enough, okay. You know, at this point, you know, you would name it if you wanted to. You know, you can't obviously name things the same. So you would, you know, if you were adding two, you would have to put a second name for uh, for the second module to something other than hardware translator. And it automatically just, you know, fills in, right? So right there, it's filling in input. It'll show you the input number. So that's the input number on the module. And then what the zone, uh, the the equivocal zone on the panel is going to be, right? So that that's really that simple of enrolling uh, an IQ hardware power G. One neat uh, thing no. about that, excuse me, no, I was going to say one neat thing about that, when you enroll the translator, all eight zones populate in with it. So you don't have to learn those in independently. You just have to go back and edit uh, the zones as you need to. Go ahead. Neil. Yep. Yep. Perfect. And yeah, and, uh, you know, if you can, you know, we've had this question too, you can actually delete zones, right? So if they're, you know, there's the option through programming just to disable the zones, that's there. Uh, but some people actually want to delete the zone, and you can do that. You just delete it, and then if you want to re-add it after the fact, it'll actually be following a very similar process to what we're going to show you here about how to activate the PGM2. Right? You'll, the, the difference is you'll now have a drop-down, uh, and you'll be able to choose. You know, so if you deleted Zone Three as an example, you would see Zone Three in a list. You can re-enable it from the same thing. So you know, same process along here. We're gonna you know enter our installer code. And then, you know, settings, if you see that translator symbol like that, you know, you're either tampered or you haven't put the resistor on the bell loop. One of the two troubles you'll see. So devices, the same thing, security sensors. So this time you're gonna go add sensor instead of auto learn, and you're gonna enter the serial number of the module, right? So it was 4605646. And it automatically, if you notice, changed hardwired input, you know, to, PGM, right? So now P PGM2 is now that fire loop automatically. It made that change, uh, you know, automatically. So in the event that, again, you were trying to re-enable a zone here, you would, in that drop down where PGM2 fire loop was visible, it would just be showing other, you know, other things, you know, especially if you're on 260 or higher, you'll see core bus, keypad, uh, any deleted zones, uh, plus the, you know, the, the two wire smoke loop. And then, you know, the easiest thing here is programming PGM rules. Uh, and these options only show up, you know, if you have a wired to wireless module or uh, the IQ Hardwire Power G installed. It's very similar again. You're going to go to installation devices. And now you're going to see a whole new box once you hit security sensors. On the bottom right here, you'll see a new box called Power G output rules, or as we like to say, PGM or, or Power G rules. Uh, and then this is just, it's, you know, it's all self-explanatory. You can add, you know, different rules, call them what you want, uh, choose your output type, you know, is it normal, is it inverted, um, are you looking for a latching action or, you know, just a momentary action or, do you, or are you looking for a timer? You know, so you can set the timer. One of the cool things here is you can set that timer up to 300 minutes, uh, which is pretty, <laughs> pretty impressive, uh, triggering by system or zone. Uh, and then, you know, obviously you can choose the zone, whatever zone you're looking to be able to use. And then the status, right? Do you want it to open or close, you know, to trip that PGM? So even in that piezo example, you can actually program, you know, we, we, we kind of ran out of scenarios when we were first doing this. So we put those piezos in. I think I ran out. I, I stopped coming up with new ideas at 12 different rules associated to that single PGM. Right, so I kind of just ran out of ideas at that point, but you it's pretty well endless what you can do. So I'm going to hand this off to you, Dan. All right, tips and tricks, best practices on this. We mentioned that the module has an AUGS positive one and AUGS positive two. They are split for UL purposes, ULC. 
Uh, we want all Berg devices that require power on AUX1, all life safety devices that require power on AUX2 to split that power requirements. When it comes to partition assignment on the PGMs, those will only show up if you've enabled partitions. So if you have not enabled partitions on the control panel as you start to program the PGMs, as Neil mentioned, uh, the partition selection won't show up. If later on you do add partitions, you need to go back and manage the zones and PGM activity uh, for partitions one through uh, four. And then if you're utilizing one of the key fobs, we can use the star key on that key fob to activate the PGM and it can be set up as momentary or latching. When it's set up as latching, you press the button one time, it activates the PGM. When you press the button a second time, it deactivates the PGM. And upcoming here is an example of that, of a gate operation. So as we press, push- you, Are you pressing the button, Dan? Go ahead and push it. Yep, I'm trying. There we go. Activate the button and we can get that gate to now follow that rule. All right. Motion detectors, we can follow motions. They don't get into a latching function because the motion is momentary. So you will only have a timed function there. In addition with the motion detectors, the high traffic shutdown rules will come into play with that as well. So if you have a motion that is set up for five minute high traffic, you'll only get that one trigger. Uh, and then when the motion restores after five minutes, you'll get a second trigger. It won't be like a door opening and closing multiple times triggering that action. The latching action will follow the open and close state. For example, the front door opens, it will maintain the latch until the door closes and it restores that. So that latching will follow the condition of the zones. And as Neil mentioned, we can uh, write multiple rules into a PGM so that you can have it follow many zones or in addition, the arming entry and exit delays or arming statuses, all sorts of different activities can be assigned to one PGM. Neil, back to you. All right. So, yeah, I mean, we're, you kind of look at some of the use cases of, you know, where we can use the, you know, the IQ hardwire power G and the 16 F, right? So you've got your, you know, this would be uh, Dan's house. Um, you know, he's got his boat house out here. You know, it, you know, he, he, you know, he needs the range of the, of the power G wired to wireless module. He can have that, you know, he can have the power G wired to wireless in his house. He can also use the 16 F you know, for, you know, in the main house, you know, where, you, you know, range is not as important. And then you've got the ability for the power G for the range down the, you know, downstream or, you know, out in his boat house or in his detached, you know, coach house in his backyard that he has. Dan lives on a beautiful acreage. Uh, but you'd have the ability to use the power G wire to wireless module there too, right? So again, using the 319 box, you know, be it IQ2 or IQ4, you know, using a gold box, you know, the flagship panel, you're going to have the flexibility to be able to use the, the Power G module along with the IQ 16F, which is the 319 module, right? So really, really good flexibility, you know, and this is what it comes down to at the end of the day. You can make any device Power G now, right? You know, is it gas detectors, you know, um, you know, emotions, obviously, you know, tripping sirens and strobes and heat detectors. Uh, you know, you'll notice up here, Optex beams. Stay tuned for some pretty exciting news about Optex beams. But in the meantime, you can wire them into this module, make them power G and use them on IQ panel across the board, right? So that's that's really where we come down to. Any two or four wire device can be turned into power G now. You know, at the end of the day, uh, you know, this is back to you, Dan. <laughs> One platform for every solution, perfect solution, whether it's residential or commercial, new construction, or existing construction, that module will take over any hardware device. Perfect solution. And I and I left you five minutes on purpose so you can talk about this next slide, Dan, because I think this is this is the exciting this is the this is the gravy. This is exciting here. Well, we won't take five minutes on it because it's not that long, but this is exciting news. This product is changing, has changed uh, a couple of times already. In the fall here, we're excited about 
uh, updating the firmware of the IQ panels to 2.70, and then the firmware of the uh, translator to 1.2. And with that new change, we will be able to support up to four zone expanders per takeover module, giving us 40 total zones per box and up to 80 total using two of the uh, PG9WLSHW8 translators. All sorts of exciting changes coming down the path. You want to add anything to that, Neil? Or should we yeah, open up? I'm, since I'm in the GCI uh, office in Concord, I'm going to go find engineering and see if we can get that part number shortened a bit. But uh, this is exciting. Um, I've got this in beta right now with four zone expanders on it. Uh, and you know two keypads on one module and it's 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 blowing my mind right it is uh you know a 40 wire a 40 zone takeover module right <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty impressive all right i guess uh joel mark are there any questions that uh, we haven't addressed or does everybody get four minutes back in their day uh i i think we've been doing a pretty good job answering them all in the background here all right so no no softballs you want to throw us Kill some quick time. one there for you neil how many expand zone expanders does this module support today? None. None. Okay. As, as of today, none. <laughs> four uh, four per module, two modules per system. So yeah, up to 80, 80 total zones later in the fall. That's it. All right. Well, folks, uh, next week, uh, as we've mentioned, next week will be, uh, it's just going to be fun and games. So we, we really hope you join uh, join us. We're going to have some cool quizzes on what we've talked about in season two and maybe a few trick questions along the way uh, with the opportunity to win some, you know, some cool Colsys and uh, JCI swag. Uh, it'll be the same bat time, same bat channel, uh, 30 minutes, quick and easy. Uh, if you haven't uh, done it before, uh, check out or download the Kahoot app, which is K-A-H-O-O-T. Um, you will need two screens. So you will need your mobile and whatever you're watching this on, uh, or you know, two screens on your laptop, whatever the case may be, because uh, you will need to see the questions and the answers. Uh, but again, we'll be giving away some cool swag and we really hope everybody joins us uh, you know, as we wrap up season two. And just that friendly reminder, we do have uh, you know, just uh, an after, wor after workshop survey. We appreciate your feedback. Uh, if, Dave, if Dave's on the phone, Dave will know exactly what I'm talking about. Can you type something then other than whatever you want to do uh, for future workshops? Uh, but other than that, you know, we, we really appreciate the feedback. It's, it's very beneficial and it's going to help us, you know, keep, keep this interesting for you um, and, and, you know, cover topics you want to hear. So right, with that, everybody gets two bit, minutes back in the day. Dan, I loved what you did with the PowerPoint. I love the automations. Great job, my friend. And we, you, will see we will see everybody next week. Take care and be safe.